Hello everyone, welcome back. Let us continue our discussion. So, in this last module, uh, we um, solve structural vibration problem using ANSYS, right? So, this is the second lecture and in the previous lecture, we defined the asymmetric plan building that we also modeled for modal analysis. Let us quickly go through the details before we uh, discuss our uh, today's topic that is time history analysis. So, we have a asymmetric plan building and here we have a G plus 3 building where the depth of foundation is 1.5 meter, we have fluoride 3 meter, we use uniform sections for beam and column. So, beam sections for the complete structure it is 0.3 meter by 0.35 meter. The column section uh, remains same for all the floor levels and it is 0.35 by 0.35 and the slab thickness we have is 125 millimeter. Now, this is the geometry and then we use the material which is concrete here and the default uh, concrete property in ANSYS we used to do the modal analysis and we also plotted the mode shapes. Now, that is the elevation and we did a detailed uh, model analysis and these are the steps if you recall we discussed in the previous lecture. I am not going through the uh, individual points which we have already discussed in detail. So, our uh, today's topic is use that model solution and using those modes that we have extracted from the model analysis do a model superposition analysis and using that uh, we are going to solve the response of the structure. Now, again for that we are um, going for forced vibration and uh, because this is a civil engineering structure normally in civil engineering structures uh, we have different types of external loading and out of that the two prominent loading is uh, they are earthquake and, and wind load. So, in this analysis we are going to apply earthquake. For that we will again select the foundation level and at that point we will select all the nodes and then we will apply the earthquake ground motion. And if you recall our discussion how when we derived the equation of motion for both uh, SDOF system and MDOF system, we again um, first defined the generalized coordinate and then with respect to ground deformation we defined another set of coordinate which is uh, relative to the ground and then finally we convert that to modal coordinate. So, that was the step and today uh, using the software we are going to solve following the same procedure. So, of course, for modal superposition analysis we have to do a modal analysis first which we have already done in the previous lecture and we will um, take that model and then uh, we will do the transient analysis. For that we have to apply the ground motion and we already have the L centro recorded motion that we will apply at the fixed support and we will also apply ground motion along three directions because when an earthquake occurs ground experience shaking in all three directions. So, we will apply ground motions and then once we apply ground motions we will solve the structure. Once we solve it using modal superposition then what we will do we will select some nodes at the top floor level and then uh, we will plot the time history response along different directions. So, let us start our um, analysis. Let us uh, quickly go through the model that we developed in the previous lecture and then uh, do the model analysis. So, here you can see uh, we have the model developed from the previous lecture. So, and we solve for first 15 modes. Okay. So, here is the model and if you select one by one all the modes, uh, you can see the mode shapes and you can also animate that. And I already explained in the previous lecture that uh, first uh, two modes are in lateral direction and then the third mode um, is basically a torsional mode and that is how it continues 
the torsional mode is simply because we have asymmetry in plan and that brings in torsion now we will use this model to go for transient analysis but before we do that let us uh, quickly go through the model results once more and here you can see the uh, model solutions what it shows is actually the model mass and participation factor so what you can see what you can see uh, uh, the first it gives participation factor so uh, we extracted 15 modes right so for all 15 modes uh, we have participation factors along x y and z directions and we also have a rotation along x y z so you can see the first set of values uh, that gives us the participation factor along all these directions now once the participation factor is extracted then uh, we have the effective model mass and uh, normally what we do we consider uh, 90 to 95 percent model mass when we go for model superposition otherwise if we trunk it uh, with less lesser model mass obviously uh, our uh, response of the structure will not uh, get converged so here you can see the model mass that we consider for our analysis and it covers more than 90 percent so that's the reason we consider first 15 modes and uh, in x and z direction you can see we have sufficiently covered the model mass so of course uh, if we increase the number of modes uh, we can increase the effective mass along other directions for example if you take y direction here right now we have 0.59 roughly 60 percent that we can improve if we consider higher modes but because our y direction is vertical for the time being we are not paying attention uh, along that direction our main concern along two horizontal direction that is x and z so let us continue with that model but if you go for uh, design along uh, y direction so you have to increase the number of modes so that you have uh, more than 90 percent effective model mass in that direction okay so with that uh, uh, initial discussion so now let us use this model for uh, time history analysis and uh, for that uh, first what we have to do we have to we have to add the option uh, that we have uh, for this uh, um, structure in ANSYS workbench. So, if you see the left column here, you have different options. Out of that, we have uh, time history analysis, which we call transient structural. So, we have to select that and drag it and connect it with the model solutions that we will do in a minute. So, we select, drag it and collect, connect it with the solution. Here you can see we have two blocks. We have two blocks. The first one you can see it represents the model solution. The once model solution is done, then we use the model solution and go to the transient structural solutions where we will solve the structural response for which we are going to apply the support motion and here you can see we take the output that is the solution of the model analysis and then we use that to complete the solution for the transient structural okay so now let us apply the earthquake along x y and z direction okay so now we have this uh, uh, model analysis done so we are going to apply uh, earthquake ground motion for that um, our um, input motion is l centro and here you can see we have three components of l centro ground motion so we have uh, one along x then y and then z right now in the original L centro record, we actually have the record along three orthogonal directions. But here, uh, we will not use those uh, three orthogonal directions data. But what we will do, uh, we will consider 
uh, the major component and then as indian code says that you uh, apply 30% along the orthogonal directions so along y and z we consider 30% of that data but again if you have the original record you can apply that also this is just to remind you the codal provisions we have uh, in our country so uh, we start with the l centro ground motion along principal axis that is here we denote it by x then we make 30% you can use if you have a, a complete set of records along three orthogonal direction that also you can use now we have this data and uh, this will define one by one along three orthogonal directions and then we will solve so let us go back to the model and then um, we will uh, add first transient solution for that once more we solve the model solution here and uh, if you recall for model analysis what we need is mass matrix and also the stiffness matrix right we are yet to define the damping uh, for this structure which we will do in a minute so first we have to set the time steps the reason is we have a recorded motion and for that recorded motion we have a time step uh, we keep that same time step here so that every time point we have a uh, input motion recorded at that time step we will find out the solution so uh, you can see the time step here so the de de delta t we can calculate just by taking the difference between two successive time point and then use the delta t there in the model so here we change the delta t accordingly for that first we set the final time point in our record we have we have records up to 53.69 so we set that first and then we set the time step now uh, we go for transient solution so first we have to define the the gravity because when we apply earthquake uh, the gravity acts on the structure so we will replicate the same situation for that we apply gravity in our case we have to apply gravity in negative y direction so that we do then we have to define acceleration which we already have in digital format that we will copy so we name it acceleration along x direction and then we apply it at the base and that's why we select it accordingly then uh, we have another option here it is absolute result that means if we uh, select it yes then we will get the absolute values at each and every time point so it will cumulatively sum it up but right now we are applying the recorded motion at each and every time step so we set it as no and then all fixed support in this case are excited by the same amount of motion but if you have uh, other type of structure for example in case of a large bridge where two supports are far apart then we can apply different ground motion at different support in that case we have to apply the differential support motion and for that we can select a particular support and then apply a particular ground motion but because our lateral extent is small here in case of building all the supports at the foundation level they are excited by the same uh, level of earthquake and that's the reason we select all the base nodes and apply the ground motion so let us apply ground motion along x and because we select it from the table so we 
copy it from the digital description of the earthquake along x direction so we copy it and then we paste it here so we have uh, the complete record of earthquake and you can see the plot here also this is the plot for l central ground motion now we have defined along x so what we do uh, we copy it along y and then we'll change the data along y and we'll repeat the same procedure for z also so again we copy from the records and then we paste it to define the motion along y and then we will define it again along z so the pattern of the motion is same because we uh, apply a 30% factor 0.3 on the main component along x but if you have a different record you can um, apply so we copy again uh, the same along z direction and then we change the name this is along z direction and then again we copy although the magnitude is all the same so let us repeat the procedure so you just copy it and just to show you the procedure once more otherwise uh, the value is all the same what we have already in the y direction ok so now uh, we have defined earthquake motion along x, y and z direction and that too we have applied for all the supports. Now uh, we have to define the damping level. For that again uh, you can see here we have the damping parameters and we have uh, different options. You can see the you can see the uh, options available here you can define them I mean critical damping ratio for all the modes you can also define the uh, damping as per Raleigh's model so we can uh, define the mass and stiffness proportionality coefficients and accordingly it will calculate the damping so in this example we are going to apply 5% uh, critical damping in all modes so we select the first option So now the damping is defined and then we go for solution. So we go for total deformation uh, that will give us response in each and every uh, node along every degrees of freedom. We can also select a certain node and then a particular direction and we can also save the response along that particular direction for that particular node so let us do that in a minute so we will select the nodes and for that uh, we select the topmost point so you select this corner once you select you can identify the node number here you can see the node number is given so along this node uh, we will save the response uh, the x component y component and also the resultant yeah so you can see the directional option we select that and for that particular node we have already identified we will um, save the response along x y and z
so this is along x and then we can repeat the same procedure for y and z so first we select z because xz represents the horizontal plane then finally we define it for the vertical direction which is y here Similarly, we select another point and in this case we select that corner point here you can see the node number and then again at this location we select the directional option and using that we can extract the result in each direction So, for the second corner point, we set the directions now uh, in a similar way we can select other points also, but uh, for the timing let us consider two points and then uh, let us solve. So, once we solve this structure, it will use the first few model frequencies. In our analysis, we have used first 15 model frequencies and uh, using that, we will go for model superposition. Let us wait a few minutes it solves and then uh, I will show you how to plot the response. Okay, the solution is done. So, now uh, we will check the time history response. So, let us first take the corner point, first corner point and here you can see it shows the absolute value of the time history. So, we can one by one uh, plot the directional response. This is the resultant of uh, three components uh, of the displacement along x, y, z. So, let us select x direction and you can see the response uh, along x direction. So, the unit is meter and uh, you can see the response of the structure along x direction. Uh, at the top most corner point and then from this we can find out the maximum deformation in the positive and negative direction and that uh, is useful for the design. Now, this is along x direction similarly we can also plot y and z direction. So, let us consider z direction. This is the second lateral direction and here also you can see the response of the structure. Remember we have considered only 15 modes in this analysis. So, you can see um, how we can use a modal superposition. So, the third direction along vertical and here again you have the response at that particular point. Now, 
we select the topmost corner point so we can select the same point one story downward and then using um, the response at the two um, locations we can actually find out the interstory drift now we consider the corner point so the second point we have in our analysis is the corner point so let us select that and here you can see the resultant uh, deformation at that particular location so in a similar way we can find out what is the deformation along x y and z so let us select x and then we will get the response along x and from this you can also see the different frequencies uh, because if you recall the time history of El Centro earthquake, it has different frequencies appearing at different time point and that is also reflected um, in this uh, response. Obviously because we consider first 15 natural frequencies, so their um, effect in the response is prominent and that is what you can see. Now again let us see the second um, lateral dimension, so that is a z and here again you have the response and finally the vertical direction so here you have the response along the vertical directions now uh, when we select the output we select the displacement only and that's the reason we have xyz component of the displacement instead of displacement we can also see the rotation at a particular point so if we design the corner column which is expected to uh, suffer some ro uh, torsion and for that uh, rotational deformation is important and we can easily uh, select that at the output and then use that information to design the structure. So in this analysis you see how we can actually see use the model superposition to find out the response. Now <coughs> remember in our theory class we discussed different other numerical solution techniques for example central difference numoc beta wilson theta that also you can adapt those options are there in that case we will not go for model truncation but we will use the complete set of mass and stiffness matrices so we will consider all the degrees of freedom and the mass and stiffness matrix in that case you will consider will have um, all degrees of freedom and obviously if you consider that your uh, time consumption will be much higher compared to what we have in modal superposition because in this case only selected modes are used. So we first develop the equation of motion in the uh, generalized coordinate and then using eigen analysis uh, we convert it into modal coordinates. So remember before this time history analysis we solved the modal analysis and from that we get the uh, dominant modes based on their participation factors and then use that uh, uh, particular set of modes from the model analysis to find out the time history response. So I leave that exercise with you so you can try for um, other options uh, when you go for time history analysis. So you can uh, use Numac beta or Wilson theta. In fact uh, in ANSYS there is an option you can extract mass and stiffness matrix. Uh, we will show that to you also at the end of this uh, week and uh, once you develop a model then you can extract mass and stiffness matrix and you can develop your own code in MATLAB and using uh, the same Wilson theta or Numac beta algorithm we developed earlier you can also solve the structure. That gives you uh, liberty because uh, when you have the mass and stiffness matrix you can use that for other purposes which uh, we are not going to cover in this course. But once you can import those details in MATLAB, you have complete insight about the structure. Otherwise, if you wish to develop your own code in MATLAB, that is uh, very complex because you have complex structure that you can bypass. So any complex structure you have to design that you can model in ANSYS and then uh, you can extract the uh, nodal informations, element information and then um, degrees of freedom and also the mass and stiffness matrices that will show. But this example clearly shows you how to go for model superposition to find out the time history response. Hope this is clear to all of you.
and I will suggest uh, all of you should try this uh, problem and then um, solve the response, plot the response and see how it comes. Uh, instead of displacement, you can also try with velocity acceleration and uh, other stresses. You can uh, also obtain that from the uh, complete solution that we have once we solve the structure. So, explore the options available in ANSYS that is uh, uh, left for you, but um, you get a clear idea how a complex structure you can model using finite element and then um, once you develop the finite element model, you can use that for uh, different analysis. In this uh, lecture, we have shown you the time history analysis. So with that, let us close here. Thank you very much.